What's up party people and welcome back to my channel. So today we're talking about some new makeup from the drugstore and this is actually pretty small compared to my normal videos. I usually talk about what seems like 15 products but today we're only talking about a few and we're doing it kind of like speed review style. So let's go ahead and get into so it. So the original video, uh, this is not, this is me two months later. I talked about an Essence palette that was released for the, like their 20th birthday. Like they had like a 20th birthday collection and it has since been discontinued. So yeah, very very summery would have been nice to hear about it in the summer i come to you bearing more essence products to try to stick to the theme so they came out with these like 12 pan palettes i'm pretty sure these are new these are around ten dollars on the ulta website so the one i want to talk about today and why i'm wearing my eyes right now is this uh benvenuta ben 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 i've never heard this word before ben ben the Roma palette, okay? We're gonna call it the Roma palette. Look, I don't speak other languages, okay? I only speak hick. My nickname is Sue Bob. I prefer Sue Bob. It's a nickname I've always had. It's a very muted kind of palette. Like whenever I first looked at it, I didn't really see a lot of inspiration from it. Kind of thought it was boring. Uh, this is amazing. Shimmers are on point. The mattes are on point. I love the ratio of mattes to shimmers. I think there are, let's see, seven mattes in here and five shimmers. So I think that's perfect. Shades pair really well together. They all blend into each other really well. I normally don't like peachy tones. Like I, I for some reason, orange tones on me just don't really do anything for me. But this just looks so soft and wearable and just very, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's everyday appropriate with a twist. So yeah, this one was a very pleasant surprise. Next up is what I feel like is going to be the center point of the video. Like this is what I feel like I, I focus the most on. This is the Essence 16 hour cover and last powder foundation. It's $6 at Ulta and they have a whopping eight shades. Look at this. Just advanced technology people. Yeah, shade selection sucks. Today I use the shade number seven natural suede, which is a pretty good match. I have no problems with it. It actually worked out pretty well. So I've just used it as a powder foundation. Before we go any further, I have oily dry combination skin right now. Right now it's 9.55 at night. Our check-in time was 12.25, which you'll see in the demo. So we just passed the nine hour mark going on 10 hours. I'm sure we'll get to that by the time I get done talking because I talk a lot. So first off, this is a very soft, smooth, finely milled powder. Like it does not feel like a $6 powder at all. It's one of those that when you swatch it, it begins to feel like nothing. I applied it three different ways. So on one side, I applied it with a powder puff. I was actually surprised because a powder puff usually applies things very heavily. And I was afraid that it would look too cakey, too heavy, maybe too drying. And this was actually my preferred method of the three ways that I tried. I like this the best. I don't know how it looks on camera, but from my end, my skin on this side, like where I first applied it with a powder puff looked like I photoshopped it. Like it just looks so mega smooth. It completely softened over my skin and blurred my pores. It did look kind of like lifeless before setting spray. Like I was, I really had to go in and hydrate. I actually used two different setting sprays. I used a hydrating mist from ColourPop and then I used a final setting spray to kind of set everything in place. And after I did those two things, it did look a lot better. Like I, I could see some life brought back to my skin. Like I could see some glow. As far as coverage goes, this is a very light coverage foundation. I didn't find it to be very buildable. If you have really good clear skin and you don't really have a lot to cover up, then I think it'd be fine for you but for me, my skin is very problematic today. Like it is very active. I've got some dry flaky spots on my nose. That was a pain to mess with. So uh, it wasn't the best day for a lot coverage anything. I don't really have a lot of breakdown or anything. I mean, I do see my blemishes and stuff popping through. So it was a lot covered to begin with. So it's, you know, neither here nor there. I mean, does my face look a bit tattered and worn? Yeah, but considering what I'm working with today, like what I've got to cover up, um, it could be worse. I will say around the four hour mark, my skin started feeling kind of like tight, kind of stretched, but it doesn't feel like that anymore. It actually feels very breathable and very thin, very skin-like. not shiny, I'm not oily, and the products on top held up pretty well. So yeah, for me and my skin and what I look for, I think I like this a lot better as a setting powder, but not too shabby. Next thing I have are some Cokie blushes. I have more shades than this, but I just used two today. These are the soft gradient blushes. I have the shade Heartthrob and Starcross. Starcross is kind of like that, what is that Dior? blush. I don't know what it's called, but it's the one that's kind of like a lavender undertone pink that looks hideous. Somehow it ends up working for like every skin tone. I think that's kind of what it's trying to be. It's like a really hot pink, a lavender, and a warm mustardy yellow. So whenever you combine the three, it looks just like the Dior shade. And on the skin, it actually didn't look that over the top. It actually looked pretty wearable, kind of like tones down over time. Now it's very muted. And honestly, like compared to the other shade, it ended up looking almost this exact same. On the other side, I use the shade Heartthrob, which is more of a, you know, everyday corally peach kind of shade. So this top shade's a light peach. It goes to a light pink. And then 
then that coral at the bottom. I don't know if I mentioned this, but they're all matte, so the entire line. This is really pretty as well. Like, this is a very everyday kind of shade. Like, it's just a really neutral, well, not neutral. It's like a warm kind of peachy coral. Very smooth, very soft, super finely milled. But it softens out and blends very, very well. Like, it just, it completely sinks into your skin. So, if you like matte blushes, I recommend these. Then I have the new highlighter from Essence. This is called The Highlighter. I'll talk about another shade in a different video. I don't know which one's gonna go up first, but I talked about the shade number one, Mesmerizing, which is the lightest, and it's like a white gold. I wasn't very impressed with that one. Like, it just was very lackluster. I honestly wasn't aware that there was another shade that would be more suitable for me. So, I went into Ulta a couple days ago and saw they actually have like four shades, and the second shade, which is this one, in the shade Sun Showers, it's this beautiful neutral champagne. This looks kind of like a cream on the skin. It went on like absolute butter. Like it's just so satiny. It's just this beautiful, like natural kind of sheen. Like it just looks so lit from within. It just goes to show you that sometimes if you have a product that just doesn't work with your skin tone, like maybe it's too light or it's too dark, you can kind of throw off the performance. This is actually really, really nice. So I have another highlighter and I'm pretty sure this is part of like a Halloween collection. So probably going away soon too. This is the Perfusion Candlelight Ritual Highlighter in the shade Flare. It's $5. I found mine in store at Walmart, like on the end cap display. You can also find it on Walmart's website and the Perfusion website as well. So yes, it's really pretty neutral, light gold. Um, I will say it is a little bit too dark for someone that has a very, very fair skin tone. It's almost borderline too dark for me. And I feel like this is one that looks better when I swatch it than it does actually on my face. On my skin, it looks a tad bit too dry, especially before setting spray. Like whenever I do setting spray, it looks, you know, like right now it looks really nice. It's very natural. You know, it's not too in your face, not too intense. It's got a little bit of reflection to it. Before I applied setting spray, it didn't look all that great. I do like it better with my fingers and a brush. But yeah, it's good, but I just don't think it's a must have. Next thing I have is one I'm wearing on my lips right now. This is the new Catrice Powerful 5 Lip Care. So yeah, it's just that very on trend tinted lip balm kind of thing. It kind of looks like a gloss. It's not too over the top like a lipstick, but it gives you enough color to where you can just wear it by itself. This color is also very on trend, especially for fall. I have the shade number 40, Addict and Cassis. It's that really pretty, just like deeper mauve berry kind of tone. I will say there's not a lot of color payoff with this, so it's not one that's super buildable. This is pretty much the most I can get with it with layering it a good amount. And I really, really enjoy this. Not just the color, but just the way it feels on the lips. It's just so comfortable and moisturizing. Like it just, it stays feeling comfortable the entire time I'm wearing it. It's glossy enough to where I don't really feel like I need a lip gloss on top. Now, it's not the most long wearing formula, but it's one of the most comfortable formulas. It's like six bucks, okay? And no one's talking about it. So yeah, definitely love this one. That is it for testing out some new makeup from the drugstore slash just the affordable realm. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And also let me know in the comments below if you like videos like this that are more condensed. Like if you like the more like full face, 50 product review kind of thing, let me know. But if you like videos like this that are just, you know, just a few products here and there, also let me know. If you enjoyed it, then make sure you get a big old thumbs up. Here's a couple more things for you to check out next. So just venture around the channel, make yourself at home. Subscribe if you're not already and turn the notification on to always see my stuff. And I will see you guys in the next one. Mwah.